And not everyone has a home to escape to when these temperatures soar. According to the Associated Press, advocates estimate the homeless make up half of heat related deaths in the U.S. And tonight we are going in depth on the issue of homelessness, of course, a growing problem here in Colorado and nationwide. And we want to make an important distinction. The vast majority of those experiencing homelessness are not those you're seeing living on the streets. But tonight's focus are those experiencing visible homelessness. Here's Denver 7's Rob Harris. Give me a clap for the setup. Our conversation starts on a bench in Cheeseman Park in Denver. This park, this park was my home. Will Bengert wants to talk to us, and he wants a conversation to happen here. I would sleep up here over there underneath that tree. Many, many, many tears have been shed on these blades of grass. Today, he's clear-eyed, thoughtful, and sober. A person he says his former self, sleeping under a tree, wouldn't even recognize. I had no morals. I would do whatever I had to do to get through that day. Addiction followed him nearly his whole life, ever since his dad would pay him in beer for washing the car in sixth grade. By the time he was an adult, he was hooked on meth and committing crimes to fund his addiction. In 2016, I ended up going to prison for four years. Got a vehicle looting with injury, two drug charges, um, two grand theft autos, and a second degree burglary. I paroled to a sober living when I got out. That piece of his parole ended up being key. Kicking his addiction and finding a support system has kept him off the streets and on a better path. Now he works to help others find the same recovery. It's you know that person inside is just breaking and dying and crumbling down, but yet their pride won't let them say anything. Will Bengert found his way out, but numbers tell us more people are finding their way into the harmful cycles of homelessness. Both the stresses of the pandemic and the affordable housing crisis in Denver have forced many out of their homes. According to the Metro Denver Homeless Initiative, the number of people who reported first-time homelessness doubled from 2020 to 2021. It's not only the numbers that tell us that the problem of homelessness is getting worse. The people living downtown are telling us that too. You walk out the door and instantly feel the energy. <gasps> When's the last time you came downtown and heard kids screaming and laughing? Just hearing and seeing things you're not used to hearing and seeing in Denver. This is Lori Greenlee. She lives downtown and is a member of Citizens for a Safe and Clean Denver, which advocates for proactive policing and enforcement of tenting bans downtown. You just have to be alert and aware in a way you didn't have to be before. One of my client's daughters lives in the Coloradan, and her golden retriever came home from a dog walk one day with a hypodermic needle stuck in its paw. During our interview, in the middle of the day, in the middle of Union Station, we see an apparent drug deal happen right in front of our camera. That's why the Citizens for a Safe and Clean Denver are pushing for a bold and controversial policy, forced rehabilitation, like Will Bengert had in the form of his parole. It may seem forceful, but that's not how we treat one another. We don't just let people die in a, a doorway. Ultimately, the message is, we're a compassionate city. But other experts disagree and say that getting people into housing, regardless of their addiction, is the first and most important step. As a social worker, housing is a, is a human right. This is Katie Calhoun with the Center of Housing and Homelessness Research at the University of Denver. Housing is the response to homelessness. There's a lot of talk around this issue of substance use. It's just as likely that substance use is a response to the traumatic experience of homelessness than it led to homelessness. Calhoun advocates for a policy called Housing First, which gets people off the street and into homes with no strings attached. She says the process may take longer, but the positive outcomes will be more likely to stick. This is an issue that we can, we have the resources to end if we want to. Back in Cheeseman Park, Will Benger and I are talking face to face, something he says didn't happen very often when this park was his home. I'm guessing that is damaging to your self-confidence. It's very damaging. I would hold doors for, uh, you know, ladies, you know, elderly ladies, anybody really. And, and they would speed up as they walk past me. I'd be like, hey, and they start running off this way or that way, you know. 
You can't even give somebody a compliment. And as it turns out, it's, it's terrible. That's something that both lived experience and research tell us is invaluable as we work to end homelessness in Denver. Human connection with our neighbors who feel avoided and ignored. It doesn't cost money. It doesn't cost a lot of time. You don't have to open up your house so they can take a shower. But there's always something that you can do. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris.